Hi everyone, it's uh, me, Big Hugeman. I'm back once again with another exciting end of the year vlog. And of course, if you know what the deal is, I'm gonna be talking about my top 10 albums of 2023. So let's just be clear. This is my official disclaimer. This is all opinionated. This is all opinion based. This is all based on my personal taste. I'm not dictate. I'm not like a music critic, so I can like dictate whether this is actually a good record or not. This is just all according to my taste. So, let's begin. Number 10, Necromantium, Carnifex. Oh, so, I've known about Carnifex for years now, but you know, I didn't really start getting more and more into deathcore until like lately, because I mean, I, I mean I've, I've, I've been into, you know, like Suicide Silence, Chelsea Grin for a while. Some of Upon a Burning Body, Veil of Maya's old stuff. Uh, I mean, just recently I've, well, I say recently, even though Lorna Shore was on my list last year, I got into them um, last year because, I mean, honestly, who wasn't bumping to the Hellfire and the Pain Remains trilogy? But then I, I thought, you know, that's not enough. I got into Spite, wasn't enough. I got into Carnifex, and I thought, yes, this, this hits the fucking spot. The thing about Carnifex is that they are so consistent with their quality. Like, yeah, I might only have a select few albums in my library, but I find them very consistent in quality, and I think that's what hits the, hits the spot for me. Not to say that the other bands I've mentioned don't do that, but the consistency, the dedication to the consistency is just incredible. And with Necromantium, I really feel like Scott works more on his lows than his highs, at least in the title track. And that's great, because, I mean... Death, death core is not all about lows and you know sick genty riffs but i think what separate what separates carnifex from a lot of other death core bands is like i found some death core bands to be very genty like they take a much gent approach when it comes to the guitars and whatnot and you know the dif you know the difference between death core and death metal is like death metal is more about the riffs like, you know shredding and whatnot death core is more about the vocals I feel like Carnifex is that perfect balance between the two. Like, they consider themselves modern death metal, but, you know, they tour very regularly with death core bands. I, I, I have yet to see them on a bill with, like, you know, other death metal bands like Dying Fetus and shit. But, Necromantium, I feel like, scratches that itch more for average death metal listeners, while death core fans still have that, um, still have that itch to be scratched um and so I, I i hear this and i think wow this this really scratches the itch and i really think this is like the best way to top off or to cap off my top 10 list for the year so there we have it number 10 necromantium by carnifex number nine take me back to eden sleep token i'm gonna get a lot of shit for this because everybody's fucking going nuts over it sleep token but personally, I think <laughs> I think this album's great. I think this album has everything the average music listener wants to listen to. My thing is, is that it doesn't quite scratch the itch for me compared to like what I'm about to present next. And by next, I mean the rest of the list. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this album. It's great. There is not one single element of music not being used in this album. Like everything, you name it. Um, hip hop, jazz, <laughs> maybe some. I'm pretty sure there's no. There's definitely pop elements being used in this in this album. For me, I feel like "Take Me Back to Eden" is the perfect album for the average music listener. I say average music listener because, let's be honest, what is there one song that has been blowing up on TikTok this year? The Summoning. What does the Summoning have? Metalcore, jazz elements, and a perfect bridge of synth pop. Or it really just just a synthesizer, and I think that's I think that's perfect. Like the summoning has everything, but let's be honest, I've heard that song way too many fucking times this year. <laughs> I'm I'm already sick of it. Like I loved it when it first dropped. Now when I listen to it, I think. Oh, this is that song that blew up on TikTok. Now I'm sick of it. And there's nothing wrong with TikTok. There's nothing wrong with discovering music on TikTok. It's just for me, 
I cannot indulge too, indulge too much of a single song or a single artist or single album. If you've noticed how diverse my lists have gotten over the years, you can you can notice this example. Like I cannot have one. I cannot have too much. Rather, I can have too much of the same thing. And I feel like just solely listening to the song is. <laughs> It's like, it's like running a marathon you've already ran, which I mean, if you want to do it for the bragging rights, cool, but <laughs> the rest of the album is great. Uh, the title track is incredible. Um, I think my f- personal favorite tracks would have to be Rain, Euclid, if, that, if that's how you pronounce it. Definitely Granite. Uh, I love Granite and Aqua Regia. For me, I feel like Granite and Aqua Regia are the superior tracks to chokehold in the summoning not to say that those songs aren't good but you know like i said with necromantium scratching the itch for you know both deathcore and metal deathcore and death metal bands granite and aqua radio really scratched that itch for me i don't know there's just something so captivating about those songs that i can't stop fucking listening to i love chokehold and you know the summoning is kind of everyone's song now so (laughs) i can't really claim that one no shame in that but number nine take me back to eden sleep token number eight this is why paramore why the fuck would i have a paramore album so low on this list well here's the thing there were better releases this year and um personally i think this is one of their weaker records in the discography not to say that it's not good but I'm going to be real with you. When I first heard the title track in October of last year, I was not blown away. I thought, okay, this is fine. This isn't great. It's not breathtaking. I mean, it's Paramore. We have to appreciate that. You know, the average Paramore... <laughs> I can't say the average Paramore fan, because the average Paramore fan only listens to fucking Misery Business and Decode. So, let me start that over. Diehard Paramore fans, they're gonna they're gonna be attached right when a new song comes out. And that's fine. That's that's valid. You know, I love that. That was one to me. Because after Laughter came out, I could not stop fucking listening to it. Personally, I just think the singles were easily the weakest tracks of the album. And I think that's like, you know, the perfect marketing approach when you're releasing a new album and you drop the singles first. Like you drop the you drop the weakest songs first. And then the rest of the album comes out completely overpowers the rest of the album. And that's what has taken place here with This Is Why. It, it took a long time for the title track to grow on me. The news was fine. I didn't like the verses. I love the chorus. The bridge is probably my favorite part. Uh, Shekom Cha. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Oh, that's such a fucking groove. Groovy ass tune. And then, you know, Running Out of Time. Big Man, Little Dignity. Oh, the rest of the album is just, but the singles do not hit the same, do not hit the spot the same. And while I think this is a genius tactic, because Fall Out Boy have done this with um, Mania, where they released Young and Menace and everybody hated that fucking song. The rest of the album comes out, oh wow, this is actually a great album. I'm the only one who said that. (laughs) But this this is one of my favorite approaches when bands put out an al- or bands are putting out an album. They release like the, the weakest tracks first, and I think that's great. I think that's a genius tactic, and I think more bands should look into that because bands that like release their singles and it's the best part of the album. There's no hype. It's Paramore. I'm always gonna be appreciative of new Paramore music, new Paramore content. So number eight, this is why by Paramore. Number seven. Cracker Island by Gorillaz. Let's face it, we are never gonna get another Demon Days, and that's fine. But I think, th- I think that itch that is scratched with Cracker Island is that it is it is just as expensive as um, all of their work as of <laughs> fucking ever. <laughs> um, geez, what can I say about this album? That's hasn't already been repeated i'm never gonna shut up about it because i finally got to see them live last year and that was six years in the making because um six years before and i'd finally gotten back into them it's been kind of of a, of a bumpy road for them since plastic beach humans was not very well received and it had way too many features 
So Damon Albarn immediately yeah, released the Now Now with a lot less features. So they had more con- more uh, songs to play on tour without relying on like guest vocals and whatnot. The Song Machine series was great, and then Cracker Island comes out. the The title track was nice. I liked it. Um, New Gold. It's a fucking banger, but apparently a lot of people think that it's just the average Tame Impala track, which, that's valid. I don't listen to Tame Impala, so I cannot decide for myself. And then there's... Um... Shit. I'm trying to, like, not be obvious here when it comes to, like, my favorite tracks because, you know... Oil is a great song, but let's be honest. Stevie Nicks. Who doesn't like Stevie Nicks? Dormenta. I was very excited to hear this one. Not because I'm a Bad Bunny fan. I honestly need to sit down and listen to his music before I can like dictate what my verdict on him is. But that's that's I I find Tormenta to be a fucking jam, and I know a lot of people are pressed about fucking Bad Bunny the minute they hear his name. So <laughs> that's that's just it. That's just it when it comes to Bad Bunny. Is like people are pressed the minute they hear they hear his name. Um. You know, Skinny Ape was okay. Baby Queen is my fucking jam. Silent Running is my jam. Uh, Silent Influencer. It's a really good song. It. I feel like Silent Influencer is like the perfect throwback track because it feels like one of those songs you would have heard on, on Demon Days. And it's not like... I'm not going to compare this to fucking Feel Good Ink because we are never getting another Feel Good Ink and that's fine. I don't need another Feel Good Ink. I just want Gorillaz. And, but there's something about, you know, Silent, uh, no, 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 (laughs) Tired Influencer. That's the name of the fucking song. Tired Influencer is probably my favorite, because it, it, there's just a really throwback-ish feely to it. Like, you would have heard this on Demon Days. And then, you know, there's, there's the bonus tracks, one of which has De La Soul in it. Every time Gorillaz and De La Soul are on the track, you know it's going to be a banger. The best way I can put this album <laughs> so number seven cracker island by gorillas number six mother veil of maya i'm not gonna say we because i didn't get into veil of maya until members only came out but veil of maya fans have been waiting since fucking 2017 for a new album and we finally got it and it is some of the nastiest shit mark akubo has ever written like you know, Synthwave Vegan was a good appetizer. It's it's a great track for, you know, all eras of Velomaya fans alike. Uh, Godhead was when we really got to hear some of Lucas's attempts at deathcore growls, which is great. You know, it's it's I think it's fucking sexy when a metalcore vocalist tries to do deathcore growls. And it's not to say that, you know, that he can't perform anything from Eclipse, because I've seen them perform Punisher live, and that's pretty good. God, dude, there, there's just so much on this fucking album that I could just delve into and talk about. Really, it's best to go listen to it yourself. Tokyo Chainsaw. It's the fucking disco party song. That one's a great, that one's a great one. I had someone say that it sounded like an electric cowboy track, and I'm like... I will refrain from responding. <laughs> No shade towards Electric Cowboy. They're just not my cup of tea. Uh, Lost Creator. Oh, God. In the last three albums, there has been a holy trinity of Veil of Maya tracks that have the most insane fucking drumming ever ever witnessed, ever listened to. And I feel like that goes for Mikasa. That goes for Follow Me and now Lost Creator. I feel those, those, those three songs are the holy trinity of Sam Applebaum's just absolutely batshit crazy fucking drumming. The, f- the minute I first listened to it, well, not really the minute, the first time I listened to Lost Creator, I forgot to breathe. Because I was just fucking blown away by how crazy, this, how crazily composed this song was. I guess the best way to put it is that Mother is the middle ground for metalcore and deathcore era Veil of Maya fans. Like, there are some good songs that really take you back to the death court, to like, you know, Eclipse era. And then there's songs that take you back to like, I guess, False Idol. I don't really want to say Matriarch because, uh, I mean, Matriarch's great, but everybody fucking knows Matriarch. Everybody loves Matriarch. Can't really say the same for False Idol, but I love them both. Really? That's all I gotta say is, um, 
If you want some absolute fucking adrenaline in your gym playlist, put this album on. You'll thank me later. Number six, Mother, Fell of Maya. Number five, Super Bloom, Silent Planet. This band has been on a fucking constant rise of absolute fucking tunes ever since 2020. I say I specifically say 2020 because that was the first we heard of what was it trilogy and you know iridescent was a great album 2021 list you'll find that on there signal came out i had no idea that signal was going to be on the new album when it first dropped but it was later confirmed that it was antimatter served as the second single from super bloom and i really love what garrett is you know experimenting with in regards to his voice like there's just nothing this man can't do he has written some good fucking songs and i thought personally that iridescent was my was my favorite it was one of their best if not the best album of theirs ever but then you know i listened to antimatter I listened to collider i thought yeah no these guys are gonna keep getting better and there's nothing fucking stopping them and that's my favorite thing about silent planet they're cons not cons well i mean they are consistent but they are constantly getting better and then I listened to Offworlder when the album first dropped. And I thought, yeah, this this album has fucking ascended me. <laughs> there is no way I'm never going to shut up about this album. It's so fucking good. Um, Offworlder. Euphoria. Ugh, it's just as the song says. It's very euphoric. And then the title track is a great way to close. Dreamwalker. <laughs> I had... I had one of my best friends tell me that Dreamwalker sounded like a corn song in the beginning, and honestly, I feel that. So that's that's. <laughs> I'm never gonna not think of corn when I hear that intro or those riffs from the riffs going into the song and then into the breakdown. You know, like I said with Mother by Veil of Maya, you know, you want some adrenaline in your playlist, put this on. You'll thank me later. Ten out of ten album. I wish for nothing but the best of success for Silent Planet because that's all they fucking deserve. After all they've been through, after what they're going to go through, because I'm pretty sure they're going independent after this album. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But that's the best way to cap off my top five. Super Blue, Silent Planet. Number four, The Dark, the band Camino. I know I've only been listening to this band for two years, but fuck, man. Oh, every time they put out music, I am constantly blown away. I am constantly obsessed. Is that correct phrasing i don't care but oh man everything this fucking band puts out is incredible and i have <laughs> i have one person to back me up on that please <laughs> um oh man when i when i first heard told you so i'm like yeah this is gonna be a banger of a fucking album and then i heard what am i missing you for and i thought yes this is my fucking jam I heard Last Man in the World. I heard See You Later. I'm like, this is my fucking jam. This is all I say every time this band drops an album. I go and listen to it. It is a lot shorter than I expected it to be. The The album Camino, the, their, their self-titled debut album. What was it, like 13, 15 songs? That shit, had, that shit was like an hour, probably. And then I go to listen to this and it's not even 30 minutes. I'm like, wow, this could have been considered an EP. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. Oh, God. Of course I did. I fucking love Camino. Everything from the Heaven EP onward is just... And The Dark is no different. I'd probably say my least favorite track is Save My Life. I do not care for that song. <laughs> if they play it, that's... If they play it live, that's cool. I mean, I've, I've heard them play It's You or... I don't think they played Let It Happen or... I don't think they played Let It Happen on Screaming in the Dark. But I don't care. They played my shit. Apart from Last Man in the World. Why would you name your meet and greet package for the tour after a song you're not going to play? I don't get that. It probably because like, a lot of Die Hard fans didn't like it. But fuck y'all. <laughs> um, oh man. The title track, Afraid of the Dark, is just... Like I said, it's great. Um, Novocaine really feels like a sequel to See Through from the Try Hard EP. Because it's the same melody. Not the same lyrics, but you you, you you put them two and two together, and, and, it, and it feels like you know they were 
it feels like Novocaine was heavily inspired by See Through. It's not a copy for, it's not like, you know, word for word, rhythm for rhythm, note for note, just copy and paste like some bands like to do. Novocaine is just, uh, and I don't even care for See Through that much. It's, it's a great song. I understand why people like it, but it's, it just doesn't, it doesn't scratch that itch for me. Novocaine though, it's like if See Through was good. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's like if see through was on fucking steroids. <laughs> but you know, singles, the rest of the album, all alike, uh, it's just incredible. And the fact that see you later, I ended up, you know, putting two and two together is about like sex work positivity. Uh, I would die for this band, and I probably will. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Definitely number four on my list is The Dark by the band Camino. Number three, The Surface by Beartooth. Of course, you know, OG Beartooth fans or OG Attack Attack fans are gonna like this. I'm gonna like this album because I mean, I don't get what it is about OG fans comparing like everything they put out compared to like Disgusting or the Sick EP. There's nothing wrong with that album and EP. The thing is, is that, you know, I don't see the difference in, like, the songwriting, the the instrumentals, the production, I get it. Like, you know, Aggressive was <laughs> um, Disease and Below are, like, incredible when it comes to production. The Surface, I feel like, is probably their cleanest. And, well, their cleanest right next to Disease. And then... You know, I gotta listen to the album. There's 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 a decent balance of, you know, there's heavy and there's melodic, there's soft. I feel like it brings those all together. And I think what I value the most out of this album, instead of just, you know, oh it's not heavy or oh it's heavy. Or like I think the lyrical content in which Shomo displays in this album, the emotions that he conveys in this album i feel like those are incredibly important i value that so much like the first out al- the first time i listened to this album i heard the title track and i thought wow this is great i heard the title track i thought it was great and then um i listened to i was alive on the first on the first listen and i almost cried because this is he perfectly conveys how i've been feeling the last year you know last year i finally moved out got my own place which is what you see in the background there are some i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say deep cuts as far as like songs go but there are some songs that really tug at your heartstrings look the other way what are you waiting for um what's killing you oh man i feel there there are very few bands that really tug at your heartstrings like bare tooth while also just yelling at your face drop tuning those fucking guitars slamming the fucking drums i feel like not many very like a lot of bands do it the way beartooth does and i feel like that's what makes them unique and stand out from the rest of like metalcore in general is that they are always willing to you know test the waters when it comes to not writing the same shit like yeah aggressive was nothing like disgusting Disease was nothing like disgusting, even though it's a lot closer. Mm, I'll take that back. No. Disease was kind of close to what disgusting conveyed. Below, like, the the heaviness and, like, just the sheer emotions that he displayed in that album definitely come close to disgusting. I don't know why people don't agree with that sentiment, but I fucking loved Below. And I love The Surface. Not for the same reasons. I think this is more of an emotionally driven album than what Beartooth has put out in the past. And personally, I think that's what deserves all of our love, all of our attention, is just being able to write what you feel and it connects with fans. And he, oh man, he pulls it off so seamlessly. I go back and listen to this album time and time and again. And I just, I can't help but feel like he's watching me. <laughs> Not like in a creepy sense, but like maybe we're living, maybe we're living similar lives. Somewhat. 
<laughs> not to an extent, because I'm just a working class man and this dude's a rock star. Maybe we do share some share some of the same sentiments and I think that's what makes this stand out from all of the rest of their work. So number three, The Surface by Beartooth. Number two, Evergreen by Paris. Oh man. Oh my god. I'm sorry, but Evergreen is everything that Use Me should have been. And the fact that, you know, they have fin they finally have a home that feels like they support whatever Paris is doing, or really just Lynn in this case, feels great. Because that is clearly conveyed in Evergreen by Paris. Like, it genuinely feels like a lot of what Lynn has wanted to write without any constraints is showcased in this album. Like, yeah you might have a repetitive chorus like i don't want to do this anymore but it's still a tune and then you have songs like take my nirvana which was co-written by mike shinoda oh my god and you know you had songs like sentimental hype zombies headlights the title track is incredible oh my gosh oh god i could go on fucking days about the title track but i'm not gonna do that <laughs> Because, you know, we all heard it before the song, before the album dropped. And personally, I gotta say, this is probably their best in forever. Probably their best since um, Heaven and Hell. Which, Heaven and Hell was great. But nobody's ever gonna shut up about white noise, so there's no point in going on. <laughs> but, you know what? This band's got all my fucking support, and that's all that matters. So, number two, Evergreen by Paris. All right, number one. So much for Stardust by Fall Out Boy. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. People have been fucking dying to hear, um, what is it? An out, like a Fall Out Boy album that goes back to their roots or, you know, to their roots. We really just want them to convey something that's close to a rock record. And I feel like they do that very well in this in this album not going back to their roots but i mean they wrote a rock album that they wanted to write because uh pete went said it himself that he did not want to write a, a throwback record because he just finds that to be pointless and i agree like writing throwback records is just ugh. get with the times like just get with the times and stay there and that's what they've been doing um post hiatus like yeah, a lot of fans don't like post-hiatus content. I love post-hiatus just as much as I love pre-hiatus, and I think that's all that's. that's I think I think that's all that matters. I remember when they dropped a uh, a Christmas teaser, and at the very end, a snippet of "Love from the Other Side" played, and I was like, "No fucking way, they're gonna fucking do it." And I heard "Love from the Other Side," and I'm like, "I'm never gonna stop playing this," <laughs> and I didn't. Because I, I still have it on repeat, along with the rest of the fucking album. Like, if you go on my Samsung and you look at all the album, all the new records that I've played this year, you will see so much for Stardust at the top. There's a reason why, because just like I said with The Surface by Beartooth, I relate to this. Especially um, that lyric in Flu Game when he says, One day, no one will remember, you, remember me when I look back. Or... And also, you know, one day every candle's got to run out of wax. He's so... F they're so fucking real for that. Because it's true. And, you know, a lot of times in my life I've looked back and... No, one's, no one has ever remembered me or even cared. And there are, fe there are times where I feel like the candle in me runs out of wax. I've hit that point so many times. During college and since college. But I listened to the rest of this album and it really puts me at peace. I think that's what deserves, I think that's why it deserves my number one spot on this list. Because it's an album, just like with The Surface by Beartooth, that perfectly conveys either what I'm going through or the piece that I need. And there is no album that encapsulates that better than so much for Stardust. So, <clears throat> I'm going to ride this high as long as I can, and I'm going to make sure I indulge it. And I'm probably never going to get fucking sick of it. <laughs> so, number one, so much for Stardust, Fall Out Boy. Thank you for watching. Um, I know I don't post on this channel often, but please subscribe, like, ring the bell. I will try to do my best to post more on here. But in the meantime, just show me some love. That's all I ask for at the end of the day.
Thanks.